essentially making my way to Wheel Country Park. I wasn't going to film anything along the route, but it's difficult to ignore this little cemetery here, what appears to be a cemetery, in the garden in front of this block of flats, one of the offices. You can see a tomb on the far side, or two of them. Well, there's a few other gravestones here just behind this bench. It's one of the bigger tombs here. It's not that old actually, was it? 1890 that one. It's amazing what you find just beside the road here <laughs> in front of, uh, I think this is an office block. These little remnants of the past are all around us. That isn't why I've come to Brentwood today. I'll introduce this walk properly a little bit further up the road here, right? So that's the reason I've come to Brentwood to head up there to so that wooded highland you can see there. And there's a couple of things of interest in that open space over there, aside from it being a lovely place to walk. The lovely little lane heading out of uh, Brentwood towards Weald Country Park. So today's walk is I'm going back into the sort of terrain where I was last week to see if I can find any traces of William Stukeley's Druid Temple, what I referred to last week as a Druid enclosure. But also when I was looking at the maps and when I was out here, I noticed Weald Country Park and that looks like a really great place to walk. And there is an Iron Age camp or an Iron Age settlement or hill fort on the edge of the park and that's where I'm going to go to start with. And then I'm going to work my way towards where I've seen the description of where some people in the 90s uh, identified something that could have been the same landscape feature that Stukeley declared was a a druid temple, a druid enclosure. So that's today's walk. I found wine to get into the countryside really, just outside London, and this uh, kept calling me. It was calling me out of here. Sometimes you just gotta answer the call, haven't you? Going across a dirty big motorway now. So. This is uh, Sand Pit Lane, and the uh, Iron Age camp is apparently just off the lane up here on the where well, it crosses the road. I think this road drives right through the middle of the Iron Age camp. Kind of messed up continuity, haven't I? By putting my cap on, and I'll probably take it off later. This time we're just outside the boundary of Greater London. Last week we walked right up to the border of Greater London in the London borough of Havering. And now we're just over that border. So Greater London ends somewhere sort of over there, just on the other side of uh, Weald Country Park. So this is proper London Edgeland, Essex London Edgeland. Fantastic terrain. And I think a lot of the uh, story of London, if you like, is to be found out here. So you can see here on the map, I put an arrow on there to show the settlement and we're just coming up to that big bend in the road. That bend in the road, I think, is up there. Where that motorbike's just come round. We're here and the Iron Age Fort is marked on the map, which is great. So we can just follow this path along and it'll take us right through it. It's just up along here. It feels like autumn now, the leaves are... Look, the bronze leaves are on the ground. They're dying up on the trees here. This is uh, the perfect time for walking. Wow, can you see this? Look how steep this bank is leading up there. And that's the Iron Age Hill Fort. That's incredible. That's really dramatic from this angle. I know some of it's been flattened and destroyed over the years, but just looking at that, that is quite a structure. It was a really big site 
I mean, this is across the road. The road drives right through it, and across the road there, you can see the cricket pitch, where you can just see a green field, but that's a cricket pitch. And the rest of it is under that cricket pitch. So it's a huge sight, because look, it stretches all the way across and through those trees, and down the other side is the, is the, uh, the western bank, is on the other side of those trees there. So I guess, look, this bank here, heading down, must be the, the western bank of the, the outer earthwork. It's really quite impressive, quite steep. I'll, I'll go down there to show how steep it is. And this is from the, from the bottom of the western uh, bank of the Iron Edge camp here, looking up. It's quite high. It's a good uh, two to three metres high, that bank. You have to take into account as well, when we climb this, this bank here, that it would have been topped with a, like a wooden palisade around the edge, most likely, Amesbury Banks in uh, Epping Forest. That's what they believed. Top. So here all you're seeing really is the base of the outer earthwork. And then, I don't know how high the palisade would have been, but there would have been a palisade reaching up. So it would have been a really impressive structure, really quite uh, imposing. And it's on a very high point in this wood here. And also a very high point within the surrounding landscape. Some, there's some debate about actually what these, what these uh, earthworks were used for. I mean, this one is called a hill fort. I don't know what evidence they have that it was a fortification. You'd think they'd have to have found evidence of uh, some sort of conflict, some sort of fighting. Maybe they actually found weapons. I think they found sort of uh, earth, earthenware pots and things like that here. Sometimes they were just used as animal enclosures to protect animals in times of conflict, but um, who knows? What we do know is it was in use in that late Iron Age period. So. You know, it's part of our, it's part of our built environment. <laughs> That's why I have an interest. That's why it links to some of the other walks that I've done around London and in London. It's a beautiful ancient tree here on the edge of the Iron Age camp. So the northern bank is probably steeper than the western side. Look at that. It's really steep going down there. I think the site was apparently used in the Middle Ages, so whether it was refortified then, I don't know. Maybe they made the banks even steeper. I think it was part of a deer park. So standing down here, at the bottom of the, the northern outer bank of the earthwork of the Iron Age Fort. It's huge, it's really imposing, rising up there with the trees above and you can imagine the palisade would have been rising up there into the sky. It's incredible. It's interesting that this isn't as famous as Loughton Camp and Amesbury Banks because it's every bit as imposing as them in some in its own way. Herping Forest isn't actually that far away really it's probably about eight miles away from here so it's quite close by it's interesting isn't it I hadn't really uh, I hadn't really come across this site before until I looked at the OS map and noticed it something I just noticed actually here behind the camera it's kind of incredible Look at this amazing tree rising out of the, the centre of the uh, camp, of the Iron Edge camp. I think that looks like a redwood tree, doesn't it? Like the ones at Havering at Bower. What an incredible sight in both, uh, in both senses of the word. It really does vindicate coming back out this way. And uh, now I'm going to push on up through Weald Country Park, up through the woods here, and go to uh, the location where some people think Stookley may have spotted some 
earthworks that he identified as a Druid temple in the 18th century, in the early 18th century. Look at this wonderful terrain of bronzed bracken and ferns. This is such a beautiful park, isn't it? Weald Country Park, Brentwood. Herd of cows over there. People are very happy munching on the grass, having to lay down in the sun. There's a fantastic bit of woodland here to the north of the park. Tree on a beautiful autumn day. This is a really beautiful autumnal footpath here, just taking us out of Weald Country Park towards uh, the Moors, or the Moors Plantation, where I think the Stukeley enclosure may be. There you go, so it's a, a footpath across a private property down here. I'm not far away now. That dog is clearly not happy about the footpath. Chased me all the way down there. Look at that huge herd of deer over there. It's a bit like when we are in Dagenham Park of the week, but that's an even bigger herd of deer, look. It's enormous. They'll run away before I get close enough with this camera, but what a beautiful sight. So we're roughly where my thumb is, moving up towards Green Lane Farm, and we're going over here to the moors. And it's along this road here that there is a report of where Stukeley's uh, Druid Temple was. After last week, <laughs> my expectations have been lowered. I had, I had no idea it was quite this beautiful out here. Just on the edge of London, last week through uh, the edge of Havering, and this week just the other side of that border, around Brentwood. It's really beautiful out here. You can tell there's a degree of... Uh, fortification, if you like, of the farmsteads, the contemporary farmsteads, like their medieval counterparts, they're still fortified. The angry dogs and the barbed wire, the keep out signs and the private property. However, it is really beautiful. So this is Pilgrim's Lane. I may pass back this way later. But for now, this is going to take me across the moors. It's a really beautiful little lane, isn't it? Pilgrim Films, apt for today's journey. Pilgrim to a Druid temple, supposed site of. So this is the next footpath, Wheeler's Lane. This is the kind of terrain where I can very easily lose my bearings and get lost. I kind of just need to make my way through to the far end of this wood, to the road on the other side. I suppose as I approach a uh, potential site of William Stukeley's Druid Temple, um, it's worth having a little recap of why I came out here, I, I found it was a comment from Rupert Ferguson uh, suggesting it. I looked on maps, I did some research. And last week I came out and I headed for Neighbourstock Common. And I think what I concluded then, which is probably correct, uh, was that it's unlikely that you, there would be anything remaining. And my further reading uh, sort of confirmed this that it actually, in the Essex Naturalist of 1901, they talk about 
uh, this, whatever this was, whatever Stukely saw, the mounds and ditches that Stukely saw here, um, they report that that's been completely obliterated. And that's by 1901. But it was a great walk, and I think what I felt was that it was the landscape of Stukely's Druid enclosure. Even if it wasn't the actual thing itself, it was that very landscape. Oh my God, as I'm talking to you, look, look at the pond. Circle of holly trees. And of course, the holly is an important plant in pagan belief. That's very interesting, isn't it? So that's the road there that runs alongside the edge of the wood. And one of the descriptions of this location, or potential location, was that it was beside that road that leads uh, from Ditchley's to Prince's Gate, and that's that road over there. And I've just passed an area up here where there are some sort of undulations in the ground and some, some um, there's a bank and, and a ditch. But we're going to have a look at it and we'll make, our, we'll make an assessment when we get there. <laughs> make an assessment. It sounds, makes me sound like I know what I'm talking about. And of course, as you well know, I have no idea whatsoever. So it's interesting when you come off the road because there is a pronounced raised area here and you see a ditch now i think having walked through the wood and crossed a couple of streams back there that it's likely that this is actually a stream bed rather than a a, a ditch that's been dug but who knows i don't know who william stukely is worth well, looking up wikipedia i'll put a link below but stukely's real fame is that he was the first person to kind of um survey and map out uh, avebury and stonehenge so he's got a little bit of credibility from that. So he wasn't a complete fool. He wasn't a complete fantasist. He did describe himself as a druid in the, you know, the 1720s, 1730s. So he was obviously someone that was really bought into the, the mysticism of ancient Britain. So whether that, you know, got, you know, sort of tainted his judgment. There are other places where he saw earthworks and camps of prehistoric origin that he defined that later people have said were medieval um, but here when you look here you come off the road as perhaps what Stukely did um, you do see a, there is a bank and a ditch here and a raised area so I'm, I'm not sure you can see a point here look you can see that muddy that dark ridge there that's the kind of ditch now I think that's a stream bed there are some streams look you see a little bridge over it up here and this is a raised area here. It's got something going on, hasn't it? It could very easily be a natural feature in the landscape. When you approach it across the little bridge, it more obviously appears like a stream. But there is a, a defined area here, a raised area. It's amazing that the shape was thrown down by this holly tree. It is almost like a structure. It's like a roof canopy that circles you. And this is on the northern edge of the raised area. And you can see, look, it's a little stream here. It's probably a little seasonal spring-fed stream or brook. Regardless of whether there was a Druid temple on Navestock Common or South Will Common, which is in reality where we are, it's, uh, it's an interesting way to, to, look at the, uh, to look at the landscape, to reevaluate it. And it's really interesting to do the walk that I've done today, where you go through an actual verified Iron Age hill fort, not far away at all actually, just a couple of miles away. You place it in that context and that gives it an interesting uh, tinge because we do know that people you know, lived in this area thousands of years ago. What did they think? What did they believe? Two magical walks though, just based on a comment on one of the videos 
and uh, you know a few paragraphs of research that's all there is wonderful really really magical experience so I'm going to follow Pilgrim's Lane now which is incredibly beguiling it's a nice loop back round to the outskirts of Brentwood It'll be interesting to look into the, the origins of the name so finishing up going down this Pilgrim's Lane feels like the, uh, the perfect end to this quest the quest to find William Stukeley's Druid Temple right out on the edge of London. What a marvellous journey over two walks. Thank you so much for coming with me. Who knows where we'll be next time. Always welcome suggestions. See you then.